Hey, I'm Mark McLeod. I'm an Associate Professor of Art at Middle Tennessee State University. And today I'm going to show you how to use common household everyday materials to make a one-part mold. So, for a mold, uh, for this particular demo, uh, a one-part mold means it's going to come off the object in one piece. Two-part molds are a little bit more complex and they can do more complex objects, but one-part molds are really, really simple to do. So the materials that you're going to need, you're going to need paper plate or a plastic plate, something to mix your materials on. You want to make sure that you can throw it away because it is going to get pretty messy. You're going to need some popsicle sticks, a spoon, 100% silicone. It does not matter if it's white or clear. Uh, I usually just buy whatever is the cheapest, but it has to say down here at the bottom, 100% silicone or it won't work. Okay, so no, not painter's caulk or anything like that, 100% silicone. Cornstarch. And then for the later part of this, you'll need plaster of Paris, and you can get a smaller bag. You won't use all of this. This goes a long ways. Plaster of Paris, some water, and then an object to mold. And we'll look at why you can use one of these and not the other. Okay. So once you have all your materials, one of the first things you want to think about is the object that you're going to actually mold. So if I take this Star Wars toy and I was trying to make a one part mold of it, there's no way it can really work. And one of the reasons why is because it has too many what we call undercuts. So the way to think about this is that when you put your the silicone on top of your object is that if that silicone goes down and it catches any of these pieces underneath here, it's really difficult to come back out. And so you will tear the mold or sometimes you'll destroy the object that you're trying to cast. And so you don't want to have any objects that have a place where that silicone can run underneath it. And so if we simplify it and look at my pumpkin, the way that I kind of think about it is I imagine like if, if I was to pour a liquid on the top of this, is there any area on the side that it's going to encounter that is going to be difficult to come back up? That's an undercut. Silicone is a little bit flexible, so you could probably cast this, but you have to know that you're going to have to stretch it out a little bit to pull it off. So you're looking for objects in a one-part mold that have straight edges or edges that curve inwards this way, not any edges that come in this way, if we're going to put our mold or silicone on the top. So edges that come in this way, so it'll pop off nice and easy. So our first step, <clears throat> we're going to take our plate and we're going to get us some silicone. And you want to kind of eyeball about how much you're going to think you're going to need and for this particular demo, I'm not going to do the pumpkin. I'm going to do a small Lego. And I'm going to do this Lego because it's got nice straight edges. It's got some good detail on the top. And I'm going to push my mold down on the, on the top of it. I'm not going to be able to get any of this on the bottom. But I'm going to push my mold straight down from the top. So we're going to do this little Lego. So you want to put off enough silicone that you think will at least... Go around the outside edges of the Lego, the top of it, and give you a pretty good dense mold. So that looks about enough. The way silicone works is that silicone dries by uh, the moisture in the air. And so if you've ever had like a big glob of glue and it's never really dried underneath, it's kind of squishy underneath it. Silicone will do that too. It'll dry on the outside, but it'll never dry on the inside because it cannot react to the moisture in the air. If you look at commercial mold making materials, they're usually two parts. And so you mix part A and part B together, you pour those together, and those, they have a chemical reaction, and that's what creates the silicone mold. In this particular case though, because we're using household uh, commercial grade or household grade uh, silicone, it's reacts to that uh, air to dry. If we were to take this, okay, my big clump of silicone, 
and leave it dry just like that, it would get hard around the outside, but you'd pick it up and it'd be completely liquid on the inside. And so what we've got to do is figure out a way to introduce air into this silicone. And there's actually two ways you can do it. You can use mineral spirits as one way, um, and you can actually thin this down and make it pourable, or you can use cornstarch. And the cornstarch has just enough moisture in it where it will mix together with there and allow the entire silicone mold to dry and cure in a pretty short amount of time, like under 30 minutes. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take our silicone and we're going to start adding cornstarch to it. And it takes more cornstarch than what you think. And there's not, I'm sure there's an exact formula that you can look up, but I just kind of go by feel. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to mix it together until it becomes non-sticky. So it's not, it doesn't uh, stick to your popsicle stick and all of that cornstarch is completely mixed in. So it's kind of like uh, kneading dough and gradually adding flour. What I like to do is just slowly fold that cornstarch in and push it down and then flip it over because a lot of times the stuff at the bottom is still really wet. What I'm doing here is just folding that cornstarch into my, my silicone over and over and over again. And so while I'm doing that, I'm also introducing air and that's going to help it dry. I would not try to do this with your bare hands. It is really sticky and messy. If you do get it on something, um, mineral spirits will clean it right up or any type of solvent. And you can tell when it's starting to get ready, when it's no longer sticking to that popsicle stick as much. I can tell though that I've got some down here at the bottom that has not been mixed in all the way. And so I'm gonna make sure I get that really mixed in. And when you, when you can pick it up and it's not sticking to any part of your hand, then it's good. And so now it is ready to use. So for this next part, you can use a piece of plastic uh, wax paper, a, a paper plate. I'm going to use a piece of plexiglass just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, and this will also give me a nice clean release when I pull the mold off the, the object that I'm going to cast. So I've got my piece of plexiglass down. I'll take my Lego. And if, if your object is going to move around a lot, you could super glue it down if you wanted to. But I'm going to take this and I'm just going to start right from the top and I'm going to push straight down. What you don't want to do is you don't want to get any air pockets around the outside edges. So we're going to just push nice and hard and then slowly push back in, push back down. And so we're trying to just make sure that we get rid of any air pockets in our mold. And then one thing I like to do is to come back with a popsicle stick or a paint stick and just square up all my edges. Make them nice and square. I do like to make sure the bottom is pretty flat so that when you go to pour your plaster in there, it's nice and level and it won't run all to one side. So make sure your top is, is pretty flat or your bottom. So make sure your bottom is pretty flat. So we'll give that about 30 minutes. You'll be able to feel it and feel that it's hard and ready to go. Uh, and then we'll be able to, to demold de our object. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes. We're gonna check out our mold. It's really uh, probably been about 15. It doesn't take long at all. So you just wanna gently pry around those edges. So the way to mix plaster is, there is a, a scientific ratio that you can use, um, 
But the general rule of thumb is that as you mix it, um, if you're mixing it in a circular or a cup container, when you start to see a mountain in the middle that is not a floating mountain, it's a solid mountain all the way through the plaster, then you know you've got about enough. Uh, there's another way to do it too, and I'll show you that when we get it mixed up. But I'm going to take some plaster, and I'm not going to need a lot because my mold is pretty small. Okay? Uh, if you wanted to pre-measure everything out, you could pour water into here, pour the water back in, and then mix your plaster in, and that way you'll know exactly how much water you need for your mold. We'll make a little bit extra. So when you go to mix the plaster, you want to make sure that you sift it into your water. You don't want to just dump it in there and, and create a huge clump. You want to just gradually kind of sift it in as slow as you can. Probably one more scoop. So we're starting to get that floating island in there. So plaster Paris hardens through a chemical reaction with the water. And so once you start to stir it, it is going to start to activate. And if you mix enough of it, it'll actually uh, get hot. So we want to make sure we've got our mold ready to go uh, and then start stirring. When we stir, we want to stir it pretty quick and then be ready to pour. You want to make sure you get all those clumps out of there and it's nice and smooth. So when we're making bigger batches of the Plaster of Paris in Sculpture or 3D, one of the ways that you can test is if you stick your finger into the plaster and you cannot see your skin through it, then it's pretty much ready. It's, it's um, almost like a melted milkshake consistency, but you don't want to see any of your skin through the plaster. If you do, then you don't have enough plaster in there. I don't want to get my... So we'll use a popsicle stick to try that. See if we've got enough. And that's good thick consistency. Okay. So we're going to take our, our mold and we're going to pour our plaster right into our mold. You can take any extra. What you need to do now is just tap it just a tiny bit because there's air bubbles in here. And so you want to start tapping. Let those air bubbles come up to the top. You can see a couple of them pop in there. If you don't get those air bubbles out, it'll form uh, imperfections in your cast. And then I can just take this, scrape my extra off into my container. If your mold isn't perfectly flat and you go to set it down on the table, you may notice it, it starts to dip and then all your plaster runs to one side. So what you can do is just wedge it up, take a little popsicle stick on that side and keep make sure that this is nice and flat and it'll dry. Uh, perfectly level. So we'll leave that one overnight uh, and then come back in the morning and check them out. All right, so it's been a few hours. Um, let's take them out of the mold. So this one is not completely dry yet. And, and here's one way you can tell. If you look here, it's, it's a lot wider. And then this part of the plaster is that gray color. So it's still got some moisture in it, but I've tapped it and I can feel it. And it feels like it's safe to take out. Again, it's always best to wait until it's completely this white color. It's even whiter over here. And that way you know it's fully cured and it's nice and solid. So to get these out, we're just gonna slowly pry around the edge just to kind of lift, break that seal. And you can either push on the bottom or push on the top. But if you do push from the top, make sure you either have a towel down or your fingers are underneath it or you're right against the table so it doesn't fall out hit the table and then crack. You don't want that. Oh, there it came. There it is. And there's my piece. And it even got the detail, even the Lego detail is on there as well. I don't know if you can see that. But the Lego stamp is even on there. And that's how you make a one part mold out of 100% silicone and cornstarch. If you have any questions, just send me an email at mark.mcleod at mtsu.edu.